I'm very excited about this video. We are going to be doing the lost recipe from Love's Wood Pit Barbecue. They're famous barbecue beans. I've got the legit recipe. We're gonna be cooking it up right now. For those of you who don't know what Love's Wood Pit Barbecue was, it was a small chain of restaurants down here in Southern California. They were out here for years and they went out of business in the early, to, yeah, early 90s, I guess, early to mid 90s. And I grew up going to this place. Their food was amazing and such a loss. I have uh, created a series where I was recreating or, you know, a lot of the recipes. And from doing that, I, I began getting emails from people who worked at the restaurants, whose relatives worked the, at the restaurants. And a few months ago, I received an email from a viewer named Michael, who actually got his hands on a spreadsheet for the bean recipe from one of the restaurants. And he shared the recipe with me before I you know, decided to make a video. I wanted to make sure that I actually cooked this recipe. This is it. And I, I'm telling you, when you serve these beans with even the best barbecue, it, it shines. It almost overtakes the meats as, as far as being the star of the plate. And this, in this video, the recipe has been scaled down tremendously, but the measurements are such as that you, you can multiply it as many times as you want because the original recipe is for gallons, gallons of beans. So we're going to be doing a more reasonable amount. In my cast iron pot, I have canned pinto beans. You want to make sure you drain out all the liquid before you throw them in there. I have here some tomato puree, some dark brown sugar. Now it's crucial that you don't improvise on these ingredients I'm getting ready to show you here. I have here some ground nutmeg, some powdered onion, some powdered garlic, some cumin, some salt, black pepper, and this right here is powdered rosemary. Please use powdered rosemary. If you cannot find it at your stores, you buy it on Amazon or take crushed dried rosemary and put it in a coffee mill or something. This recipe won't work unless you're using these ingredients, especially that powdered rosemary. Put that in there. And I'm going to mix this all up. And there's going to be another little secret to making this recipe succeed at the very end even after I pull these off the pit. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I, I just want to see you guys enjoy these beans as much as I do because they're amazing. I have here some ground pork belly. Now the pit masters at Love's, they used trimmings from you know the, the various meats that they were trimming up for the barbecue. So it's very important that you go with more fat than lean. What I did on this, I went with pork belly just because I could see, you know, the cross sections and I, I picked the fattiest pork belly section that I could. But if you're not going to use, you know, pork belly, then, you know, just save your trimmings from when you're doing a pork shoulder, ribs, just save those trimmings and, and use them. This is what they were doing. Now, again, this is all mixed up and I'm going to sprinkle this pork fat meat, <laughs> it's more fat than meat, on top of the beans here. I'm just gonna layer it on top. In reading about loves, one of the things I guess they used to do was actually, they would throw these on the pit, but they would cook them underneath the, the ribs and their other meats and allow this to catch you know, the drippings. But there's going to be plenty of fat in, in this pot of beans here, believe me. So for this cook, I'm going to be using the Lone Star Grill's pellet smoker. I have it preheated right now to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get them on the pit. Now this is actually a Dutch oven, so it does have legs on it. There we go. Just wanted to make sure those legs went into the holes. So we're gonna cook these beans now for about three hours before I move on to the next step. Stay tuned. We just hit that three hour mark Let's see where we're at. And here's what it looks like. You can see most of the fat's all rendered out. 
get some color on there. So what we're going to do now is stir all this in. We're going to crank up the temperature from 225 degrees Fahrenheit to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to let it roll at 275 for one more hour. After that, we still have one more step to talk about though. That last hour has passed. I'm going to go ahead and pull these beans from the pit, give you a look, and we're going to talk about what needs to be done in order to finish this recipe the right way. And here they are. Looks good, smells great. I'm sure right now it tastes really, really good, but still not done. You give these a try really fast, and then I'll tell you how we're gonna finish these off. Hot, <laughs> hot but good. Wow, good. The next process, and again, it's as important as any of the ingredients that went into these beans, is to allow these to cool down, put them in the refrigerator, and they're going to kind of marinate in all this goodness overnight. At that point, give it a good stir and then just reheat it. You know, throw it in a crock pot or microwave, however you want to reheat it on the stove top. And what happens is something magic. And I can't emphasize how good these beans are. And again, if you're doing a barbecue and you want to really kind of flaunt your feathers, you got to try this. I, I have missed these beans for so many years and I'm so grateful for Michael. Thank you for sending me this recipe. And again, I'll have the recipe posted. It's very easy to multiply. I, I did a barbecue not too long ago for some, this garage. They do a lot of, uh, they've done a lot of body work on my Jeep and I cooked for them. And those guys, I mean, the, the ribs are really good, but they just completely wiped out these beans. So it's good stuff. Anyway, if you're not subscribed, please do make sure you thumb it up, ring the bell, and what else? Keep the suggestions coming in. See you on the next video. Cheers.